Oil marketing companies ONGC and Oil India gain about 2% each after the windfall tax on crude gets cut to 2100 rupees from about 4600 rupees a ton. PVR climbs over 3.5% after the company sees strong collections over the long weekend. Birla Soft climbs uh, as it comes out of FNO ban. The stock is up more than 4.5% after a 6% up move that we saw on that counter on Friday as well. And Ola Electric continues its stock rally even as the circuit filter was now revised to 10%. The stock is now locked in a 10% upper circuit after a wave of new launch announcements last week boost the stock. Almost doubling on Ola Electric out there. Uh, Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Hormas Patakia. With me is Mangalam Malu. We are slightly off the highs of the day but still holding on to gains. It's been a strong start to the new week after the up move that we saw on Friday in the second half of the trading session. The Nifty continuing to hold up to around that mark of 24,600. The intraday high being 24,638. We are slightly off those levels but continuing to hold on above that mark of 24,550. The Nifty Bank though has been a bit of a sore spot in today's session. That too Saw a very strong up move on Friday but has cooled off from the highs of the day. Currently trading now below that mark of 5,500. Continuing to find resistance around that 50,800 mark as we speak. But the broader markets are doing well for themselves. Broader markets are doing a lot better. You know, Hormas, two things I'm looking out for as we move forward. One, there has been a smidge of a recovery on the Nifty Bank from the lows. Secondly, Reliance has started to move higher. So Reliance, with its weight, if it continues to move higher, then maybe this dip that we've been seeing on the Sensex and the Nifty may get bought into and the health of the broader market continues to do extremely well. Nearly uh, six stocks advancing for every stock which is declining in the markets and a lot of these stocks are surging now as we speak. Case in point, something like a Balrampur Chini has seen an up move. Piramal Enterprises from the lows has seen a bit, a bit of a pickup. This morning itself, we had Ramdev Agarwal speak about how valuations in some names like even Trent have gone beyond uh, you know, growth expectations, but these stocks have momentum. So who's to say where they go? Well, who's to say where they go? Just pull up the intraday chart of Trent and you'll see this morning itself, the stock has moved all the way up to that 6,700 uh, rupee mark, a fresh high on Trent as well. This is uh, you know one of those bullet trains that keeps rolling on. So we'll keep an eye out on all these pockets as uh, they move along. We've lined up a management for you as well of uh, 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 you know a company that's uh, coming out with its IPO. But before all of that, let's welcome Shivangi Sarda as always for a quick check on the way the markets are moving right now. Shivangi, the initial uptick was sold into. Do you think this is a dip that needs to be bought into? Very good morning. Uh, thank you so much for having me. So we've seen that, you know, Nifty witnessed a sharp recovery on the Friday session. It closed on a positive note after the consolidation of the last eight sessions. Today, uh, we are, you know, holding above 24,500, but with a slight bit of a consolidative mode. So this is going to continue because, of course, uh, we've seen that uh, sector-specific action is on, but Bank Nifty is not performing and it is not showing any signs of, uh, you know, uh, stability. We've seen that this index has underperformed, uh, you know, for uh, the number of series to, uh, you know, that we've seen. But uh, there is no strength over here and the heavyweights are also uh, sort of giving up. So because of which Nifty is moving in a slightly dull manner. Now, uh, we are still in the buy on decline stance for Nifty. So we are expecting, uh, you know, the next target of around 24,850 and then 25,000 levels uh, positionally for Nifty with a support of 24,250 levels. So uh, this will be the range for, uh, for Nifty to watch out. Talking about bank Nifty, underperformance will continue over here. Uh, we've seen that this index is struggling, uh, you know, to hold a uh, tad bit near its 50 daily exponential moving average, still below it from the last uh, around about nine sessions. And uh, we will see a very small range in Bank Nifty of around about 51,000 and 50,150 levels on the downside. So this will be the take on Bank Nifty. Of course, conviction is more on the Nifty side. What about specific stocks then, Shivangi? The broader markets continue to do well, are in a league of their own. What's on your radar this morning? On my radar, firstly, is IGL. We've seen that the stock is uh, now uh, getting ready to come out of its consolidation of the last five weeks and, uh, you know, clearly holding well above its uh, key 50 daily exponential moving average uh, from the last, uh, you know, uh, one month odd. So we've seen that uh, this stock has witnessed a good recovery from uh, the intraday lows of, uh, you know, uh, 5th August. And then thereafter, we've seen a consolidative phase for this stock 
the good part is it has been holding on to the uh, support of 545 odd levels so now the stock is getting uh, ready for a good rally so recommending a buy here with a target of around 575 and a stop of 538 levels now the second pick on radar is trend of course this has been the mover of the year and we've seen that the stock has clearly uh, outperformed and we we are seeing a uh, you know fresh buying after the breakout which is quite positive and uh, the good part is that weekly basis uh, the supports are shifting higher from the uh, you know last many weeks so uh, overall the strength uh, in this counter will continue with of course strength uh, and tailwind from the entire sector and uh, we will be seeing a target of around 69 um, 100 over here uh, you know immediately and then we can look at for 7000 levels with a support of 6580 levels All right, uh, Shivangi, thank you so much. Uh, call and Trent coming in once again. Let's get you uh, an idea for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. Uh, Anant Chaudhary joins in with stock that he's been tracking. The stock which we will discuss today is Prince Pipes Limited, a leading manufacturer of polymer pipes and fittings in India. Uh, the company produces a range of pipes, uh, including UPVC, CPVC, PPR, and HDP, uh, used for various applications in plumbing, irrigation, and sewage disposals. uh the stock looks attractive by uh, due to several reasons uh, first it is among the largest beneficiary of the ongoing upswing in the real estate sector uh government initiatives uh, like housing for all and the jal jeevan mission are also driving growth for the company uh second uh, pbc prices have now stabilized at around 80 to 90 rupees per kg down from a peak of 180 rupees general inventory has now normalized and demand prospects looks very promising a uh, volume growth in the last quarter q1 fy25 was 14% which is likely to continue for the rest of the financial year uh, the ongoing brownfield expansion in bihar to add 50000 tons of capacity uh, will be operational by january 2025 uh, this expansion also includes uh, fittings which has higher margins stock appears reasonably valued at 24 times on fy26 earnings following a period of price consolidation over the last 3 years a uh, key risk for prince pipes could be a slowdown in the real estate activities uh, and any sharp fluctuation in the pvc prices i guess a profit coming in there from money control pro time for a short break when we return we'll be joined by the management of interarc building products to discuss their opening of their ipo and a lot more stay tuned back on the other side Welcome back. The secondary market doing the secondary market things. The dip in the Nifty has been bought into its pack steel buildings. Opens its 600 crore rupee IPO for subscription today. Closes on the 21st of August. Of the 600 crore, remember 400 crore is an offer for sale and 200 crores is a fresh over 2 lakh uh, tons per annum. And also your order book stands at around 11. Those two accounts. I just wanted to know what are the kind of order inflows that you're targeting for the next couple of years, Bates. And secondly, at peak utilization what is your revenue likely to be uh, hi good morning uh, of uh, our business the cycle time of the order execution on an average is about 8 months and therefore a very large order book is not really something that you see very commonly in our business so an 8 to 9 months order book is 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 quite strong and as we go along we look at our order book becoming far more stronger and far more uh, capable of fulfilling the capacities that we are going to be uh, we are going to be establishing going forward at andhra as you must have seen in the objects and going forward in west of india Manish, good morning. Thank you for joining in. And you know, I wanted to ask you, staying with the order book itself, that uh, most of your orders, the orders that you get, are from repeat orders. Almost eighty-one percent, as if I am correct, for FY twenty-four came from repeat orders. Do you see that number sticking to where it is currently? Because you've highlighted this as one of your risk factors that this is a repeat order. A lot of those are concerns. So, do you plan on bringing that number down as you go forward into FY twenty-five? 
Uh, so see again, uh, I would I would like to clarify what repeat order means. Interact is a forty year old organization, and repeat order classically for us is anybody who has placed any order on us in last forty years. We count that as a repeat order. So quite obviously, a repeat order for Interact is not really the same customer ordering every year or every month. It could be. It could be a Reliance who ordered us some fall ceilings 30 years ago and ordering, you know, their solar manufacturing plants now uh, is counted as a repeat customer. So repeat customer is classically in our business uh, termed as somebody who has ever bought anything from Interac in last 40 years. So to that extent, uh, it's a classical definition. And uh, we, have, we have a very strong customer stickiness and uh, we expect, uh, this to remain uh, the way it is, uh, and uh, our order book remaining as as strong as uh, it is, even even better. Let's talk about uh, numbers then, and maybe we'll try and get in uh, Deepak in as well when it comes to the business performance and the outlook. Or rather, Gotham in as well. Um, Gotham, you know, uh, the last uh, few years you all have grown fairly well. The revenues the last year have grown above that eleven hundred crore mark. The industry itself, as per your uh, prospectus, is likely to compound between 11 to 12 percent, become as big as 33 to 34,000 crores by FY29. What is the kind of market share that you're targeting by FY29? What is the growth that you are likely to, you know, display over the next four or five years? And as that happens, what are the kind of margin levers that you have? You're still at around high single digit sort of margins. Uh, so margin improvement and overall growth aspiration for you if you could give us a sense on that thank you <laughs> thank you uh, even currently we are growing faster than the av industry average uh, our growth rate is higher than the industry average for established players uh, margins are improving as more complex and buildings come in margins get better larger larger projects and this industry, in any case, deserves a larger margin, and we're all working towards that. And I, I'm pretty confident that the margin should be uh, should reach 10%, if not higher, over the years as we go forward. And the industry, there is a huge market for pre-engineered construction because it is getting used in every kind of besides manufacturing. There's infrastructure, there's airports, there's ports. So the, the entire pre-engineered construction space is infinite. And Interact is well placed to exceed uh, industry parameters. Fair enough. But Gautam, uh, I'd allude to one of the points that Mangalam highlighted earlier as well. The, you're planning on expanding capacity, yes. But at peak capacity, what is the kind of revenue that you are expecting to generate going forward at your units? At your units? See, generally speaking, each of our plants uh, at peak capacity generates about 550 crores of revenue. We talk in, that's the easier way to talk rather than tonnage. So we, we have three functioning plants which are t presently, which are uh, capable of about 1,600 crores. The additional Andhra plant will come into first phase is already, already operational. The second phase will be operational by end of March next year, which is uh, the second phase is part of the proceeds of the offer. And uh, so by the end of uh, early 2025, our est established capacity should be in the region of 2,200 crores a year. So FY26, with increase in utilization, should we expect you to post revenues of a little around 2,000 crores with double-digit margins? Would that be a fair estimate? Yeah. Can I ask Manish to answer the question, please? Manish, go ahead. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. So uh, see what happens in our business. So number one, we, we would want to do much better uh, than what we have been doing. Uh, we are growing at a very high rate. However, any new plant, as you see, will take some time to actually ramp come come you know to the capacity, uh, and we are also trying to add capacity by line balancing as part of the objective of the offer in our existing plants also. So yes, right now we are only constrained by you know how much we can do, and going forward uh, we look at a much better uh, capacity utilization and performance. We of course do not wish to put a number to it, but yes, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good growth going forward. 
let, let us put the number and you tell us whether it's uh, off the estimates or not. Uh, say you want to do a lot better than the 2200 crore which your capacity is showing, maybe with some de-bottlenecking, increasing execution, 2500 crores by FY26 with 10% uh, plus margins, is that a possibility or are we way off the estimates? Uh, I think that is certainly a possibility, all, all going well because we are working on the internal efficiencies also. But yes, we like to uh, we like to grow cautiously, and therefore, uh, right now uh, the external environment is supporting, and uh, with our capacity coming on stream, uh, there is no doubt that those kind of numbers are certainly a possibility. You know, uh, I wanted to ask you about your product mix, both Manish and Gautam, whoever wishes to answer this. Your industrial business contributed to 68% of your top line this year compared to 80% last year. Do you see that number increasing, decreasing for the industrial to non-industrial ratio? And also, if you could share the margin difference between the two businesses as well. Of our business is industrial and infrastructure. Industrial is all manufacturing. Uh, we are in all kinds of uh, sectors. We are industry agnostic. Uh, infrastructure currently is primarily uh, warehousing and uh, distribution centers. We do. We are also uh, moving into data centers. We've done data centers. We we do uh, trying to get this into the possibility of doing high-rise building, which are also picking up uh, in the use of steel in high-rise. Our new plants are actually adding capacity and product mix to be able to manufacture special sections for high-rise buildings. And uh, industry will be a prime focus for some, at least for the next year to come. But as we see the market expanding and growing, the product mix will change. But our mix is primarily custom designed steel buildings, which are manufactured in a plant and delivered to site for quick bolt down assembly. We have no other sales of uh, separate products. All right, take that point. Thank you so much. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, the headline that we have is that revenues of close to 2,500 crore with uh, double digit margins is something which is not out of the realm of possibility over the next couple of years. We'll let, uh, you know, uh, the people uh, mull on those thoughts until the next time when we speak on uh, your listing itself. And then we'll plug in for some more numbers and the outlook on your business itself. Gautam, Manish, thank you so much for joining in. Wish you good luck. Take a short break, come back, tell you more on the stock markets as well as a lot of these individual movers which uh, are buzzing around in today's trading session. Back with us here on Chartbusters, the cool off continues from the highs of the day. Now the Nifty is off nearly 100 points from the highs of the day. Now nearing the 24,550 mark, which is where it closed on Friday, led predominantly by the Nifty Bank. That is now down 300 points from the highs of the day. Now nearing levels of 5,400 after making an intraday high of 57,28. But Pula Pola Electric, that is the stock that is making headlines and continues to do so. Another 10% circuit today. The price band was revised from 20% to 10%, and so. It is locked in a 10% circuit now, 146 on the stock, almost double of its IPO price of 76 rupees within just a few days of listing. But with that, we call time on this edition of Chartbusters from Mangalam, me and the team that put this show together. Thank you so much for watching. Trading R takes the action forward.